This is literally 2024's truck market crash. I look down the car lots, I see Dodge Rams filling up the lots, half tons, three quarter tons, one ton pickup trucks, diesels, gas jobs. Then I look at Fords and there's hosts of Fords everywhere. We've got Lightnings, F-150s, we've got the F-150 gas jobs. We can't forget about GMC as well as Chevy. Lots of vehicles there as well. And on top of it, even brands like Toyota are starting to fill their lots with the Tundra. And we know Tundras were hard to come by about a year and a year and a half ago. And now even those trucks are starting to populate the car lots. And guess what? Every single one of these manufacturers are starting to undercut their prices, slashing prices below MSRP, not escalated and then sliced back. Actually, MSRP price reduced by thousands of dollars. Yes, this in fact is the start, the small end of the wedge, the indication that we're starting to see the failure of the truck market and the literal opportunity for buyers to get in on their next new truck. We've got a whole row of F-150s three quarter ton pickup trucks. We've got a tremor parked over here. And if you look, there's some big wagons here. And first of all, we look at some of the Dodge Rams and you look, some of these diesels, the full size diesels, we know they've been overpriced for some time. And now we're starting to see vehicles sliced five, six, $10,000 even or more, especially when you start to talk about some of the higher end vehicles, like the diesels, the one tons, the dualies, and even some of the half ton vehicles are starting to get knocked down in their price tags. We know that Ram has struggled with some of the reliability issues. We also know, unfortunately, Ram has been one of these brands that have felt tried to promote themselves as being more of a luxury brand and they've started to escalate their prices accordingly and in doing so they've really turned off the consumer. I personally drive a 2003 Dodge Ram and I love the vehicle because of its simplicity. It's easy to fix and work on. It's cheap for parts and guess what? I don't own the bank a dollar. And who knows? Just what the market is the way it is, you can almost ask kind of whatever you want. So it's easy to own a vehicle like that but not everybody's in that spot and some people need a new truck. Ram is in a place now where they're starting to escalate their prices. Did you hear the recent cranks in MSRP? Yeah, they've been bumping up for 2025. They're starting to put their prices up higher, which is contrary to where the market is headed. And then even more as we walk around the corner, there's no shortage of brand new Rams. They've ordered them up. They've had lots of stock, lots of inventory here. So we've got some tr sold trucks here. This one's a sold fleet. Obviously, it's more of a base model here. So there's fleet vehicles. We've got more fleet vehicles right there. As you can see, fleet and then just everyday trucks for the everyday working person that just wants to have a pickup around the house. So they're finding themselves in a doomsday path. Ram is literally in sheer denial. They don't get it. Stellantis, Ram, Jeep, all of those brands within that same sphere just don't quite understand what's going on and they're going to hit the wall hard here right away. Rams, yeah, there's lots of great vehicles out there. Okay, you don't get that specialty trucks. You're not going to get a great deal there. But anything regular, 1500s, Rebels, you know, the standard work trucks, three-quarter ton, one-ton trucks all over the place. There's lots of them. They're filling the lots. They're lining the car lots. They're easy to get a hold of. You can go and negotiate any make, model, color, configuration, and you can get deals on them. $3,000, $4,000, five, even $10,000 or more. And I know a lot of people have been saying, well, they're cranked up the prices in the last few years so far already, that even knocking a couple grand off hardly makes a difference. But remember, these are prices off of the MSRP. So not only are they not hitting M the market adjustment fees on there anymore, that's wiped. And not only are they willing to negotiate off MSRP and sticker, but now they're actually coming out factory right off brand new trucks 2024 years of the rams are literally getting slashed thousands of dollars and clearly there's an indication that there's a weakness there's a gap in the industry and nobody's buying these rams there's too many of them out there and ram just doesn't understand what's happening the consumers don't have the money people are broke interest rates are still high inflation is still strong of course people are struggling just to make ends meet with rent food and of course they just need a place to live but now ram they come out with these escalated prices did you also know that Ram also recently, right following the increase in some of their MSRP prices, of course, they've also gone and almost immediately retracted some of those prices, realizing there was such backlash by the customers and consumers that they realized it's time to scale this back. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. And not only did they scale it back and reverse some of their initial upgrades in pricing, but they're actually starting to go even further back the other way. So time will tell. And remember, tax time is when we're going to start seeing some great opportunities for those slightly used trucks as well as new trucks. We still have 2023 Rams everywhere. 
I mean, look down to Carlos. Half of these vehicles are still 23 model years and they're trying to now sell 2024s. Trust me, there's going to be deals to be had all over the place for Rams. The quality's not there. And now, yeah, they're trying to freshen up the brand new face. They're getting rid of the Hemi, so it's going to be a Hemi-less pickup truck coming up soon. And they're introducing that new twin-turbo six-cylinder engine, the Hurricane. Yeah, some people are going to be interested in that, but some people will say, hey, I want a Hemi. So now they might even risk losing some of their core clientele. So Ram is in a little bit of a st stickle point here now, trying to just sell a pickup truck. Just trying to unload the 23s. I've even seen brand new 22s still on the lot that were residual that hadn't sold from the year before. And now we're full of 2024s, means the lots are just overloading, flowing all over the place. We then also can't forget about what's going on at Ford. Ford and their quality control issues with the rear hub issue, you're losing your, your park brake and the vehicles are known to roll away. There's been rollover issues with the roof and actually having weak roof support. So in a rollover, so there's been recalls there and unfortunately there's some payouts there to go out to some unfortunate people involved in some incidents. There's been problems with other quality control issues and Ford almost leads the pack for recalls. That's all going to tell the story. Now, yes, the F-150 did in fact lead last year for truck sales. 300,000 units over Ram, and they're about 200,000 units over GM Chevy. But when the rubber hits the road, people are starting to realize the quality's not there. The prices are still high. People are still under the umbrella of high tax inflation and just don't have the money. And this is starting to taper off. We're starting to see sales flatten out. There's lots of trucks, even in the Ford realm, actually literally just filling up the car lots. It doesn't take a look around, you know, look around the car lots. You see lots of the three, the half tons, the one tons. And over here's another F-150. This one here is nice. It's a Lariat F-150. Looking at the sticker. Um, yeah, you're basically at $87,000, $88,000 for this truck as well. That's a lot of money for a pickup truck. Tons of fleet vehicles, and of course, fleet vehicles are always going to be in abundance because they're always trying to fill a market for, you know, the commercial work and the, you know, the electricians, the plumbers, the fleet vehicles that need to go out to the jurisdictions for the cities and the counties. But the vehicles that normal people, everyday people are buying, there's less of the demand. You know, obviously vehicles like the Tremors. And over here we have some nice trucks. These are Tremors. Quite the beautiful rigs here. As you can see, the Tremors, they have all the great decals and all of that. But there we have it, and this Tremor here is actually also features a three and a half liter V6 EcoBoost. So it's a beautiful unit, all decked out nice with the big oversized tires. It's a great looking truck with the decals there and all the goodness. But this truck here, stickers at about $77,900. Yikes. Highly priced, overpriced, F-150s, Lariats, XLTs. They're just too much money for what you're actually getting. Yeah, some people need a truck and they're gonna spend the money regardless. Suffice it to say, we can't forget about the Lightning. So the F-150 Lightning is also in a bit of a pickle where they're not selling. As a matter of fact, we all probably know the indications are strong that people not only are starting to claw back on the buying of any F-150s, it's starting to level off, but also the Lightnings have leveled off hard to the point where Ford has decided, you know what, we're not going to reinvest into this battery plant. We're going to hold off on those plans. And as well as the Lightning is now offered huge incentives. Just look for pricing all over the place. Look at ads. You see, you know, four, five, ten thousand dollars off of Lightnings. And that's before you even sit down and start negotiating. That's right off the MSRP that the dealers are willing to throw to the public. You go in there, you're able to chisel off a little bit more. Guaranteed, there's going to be some big deals coming out here because the lightning specifically people are starting to catch on to the electrified market don't necessarily want anything to do with the electrified vehicles the initial adopters of that were buying teslas and if you wanted an electric vehicle you generally went with a tesla there's a few people that have kind of evolved and started looking at the ionic 5 and they started looking at the ford mustang mach e but generally those are the outliers and they're not selling in abundance and neither is the f-150 lightning and as a result, Ford has actually had to scale it back 50% output because people aren't meeting the demand of the production. So Ford's scaling that back, laying people off. And that's the other piece. All of these big three are laying off workers because the plants aren't producing or they were going in high gear, but now they're having to scale down and level out. A lot of these trucks, again, overpriced to begin with. What we have here is a Chevy Silverado, absolutely beautiful truck. Let's look at the sticker on that and see how much this costs. Well, this one here is about $61,000, all dressed up. But as you can see, it's 
kind of a plain Jane looking unit, but it's a pretty truck. But we're starting to see prices getting slashed off of MSRP all across the board. Now we also talk about Chevy and GM. Now it could be we talk about the Sierras and the Silverados and the Chevys and the GMCs and even their SUVs based on full-size truck chassis are also overpriced and we're seeing stickers that are absolutely out to lunch. I mean, how much is this pretty little Yukon over here? This one here has an AT4, as you can see, AT4, it's the GMC. And we're looking at the Yukon XL right up there, four wheel drive AT4. And yeah, you have a lot of features. These ones are fairly loaded up. It's a beautiful rig, but it comes at a cost. And even these types of vehicles, based on a half ton pickup truck, $94,000. So GM isn't doing anybody any favors. These vehicles are just going up in price. But there's lots of GMCs on the lots. We're starting to fill up the lots, but GM and Chevy were a little bit smarter. They resisted the urge to actually fill up their lots in mass abundance like Ram was doing. But even GMC and Chevy are starting to still fill up their lots. They're having too much inventory. And even those brands are still having to offer up some big incentives. And just looking at some of the deals that you find in classifieds, it's not hard to find immediately without even sitting down in front of a dealership or sitting in front of a car salesperson. You're finding a lot of these trucks now are actually priced at three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 off of sticker before even negotiating. Remember folks, negotiations are key. This is right off the hop. They know they're not selling and they're in a world of hurt. Now you can might ask yourself, well, okay, big deal, Chevy or GM or specific models. The big picture is they're all doing this. That's an indication the entire truck market is suffering. Then we even look at the, the beautiful brands that, you know, obviously the, the Tacomas by Toyota have always been popular. They're sort of fairly stable. That's a very niche vehicle. But then you look at the Tundra with the new twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 has also curbed the desire for that truck a little bit. A lot of people are believing that the reliability is not quite there with some of the new Toyotas. They're great trucks. They offer great performance. And with the hybrid technology, a lot of people about a year and a half ago had to wait about a year to get, or a year and a half to get their new Tundra. But now you can walk in and the Tundras are overloading in car lots. And you can walk down a Toyota dealership and you can find numerous Tundras available for your buying experience today. Now, they're great trucks, they offer great technology, and they're basically meeting the needs of any, any of the other big three from GM, Ram, Ford. They're all doing the same thing because the Tundra is essentially a heavy half-ton truck, and it can tow your trailer, your boat, or take care of any of your work duties that you want, but you get to carry the Toyota brand name. But that even with the reputation of ultimate reliability that Toyota has had and enjoyed for years, people simply aren't racing out to buy these new trucks. They're not running out there to sign on the dotted line and they're certainly not running off to the bank to pull out a bank draft to pay for that brand new Toyota pickup truck. Toyotas are great. So are Ram. They have a work they have a place for the work for the worker that wants a vehicle like that to tow their boat. Same with GM. They want the smooth ride and Ford has always been the popular choice. But all of these big brands have suffered and clearly these are indications that this is what I call the small end of the wedge. The point at which all these dealers are struggling now and we're starting to see the beginning of the expansion of this failure in the industry, the market as a whole. There's too much inventory. Now we've done this flop and karma is a beach as I've always said before where these dealers were gouging consumers. We're starting to turn the table on this whole take game now and the consumers are scar starting to get these opportunities to get some great deals on some great new pickup trucks. You've just got to wait it out. Wait till post-tax time and you might even get some better options there coming out. But we're starting to see incentives roll out from all of the big brands. We won't even talk about brands like Nissan. They're barely on the radar for pickup trucks where the Titan is going to be basically obsolete. The Frontier is a thing of yesteryear and not nearly as popular as the Toyota Tacomas. But all of these trucks, no matter what brand, huge incentives, both on interest rates, better than most banks are going to offer up is what I've been finding. Shaved prices right off sticker. There's lots of opportunities for choices and colors, configurations. And while, yes, I know 90 grand just doesn't seem palpable for anybody who wants to spend 90 or $100,000 on a pickup truck these days, it's getting a harder place to live and people just don't have the money or the means to dig down deep and buy a truck for that kind of money. So they're fixing what they have. And that kind of brings me to my truck and why I'm not going out to buy a new $110,000 loaded up 
you know, a half ton pickup truck. I have a truck that gets me around, still does all the towing duties I need. It has all the space inside. So I just keep fixing it. O2 sensor goes, fix it. Brakes go, I fix it. You know, burns a little oil, sure, top it up, but it keeps running and it's great. It runs like a top, starts in cold weather. And as long as your pickup truck meets your trip pickup truck duties, why are people making the choice to spend a hundred grand on a new truck? Again, lots of people want it. Looking around these car lots, again, it's it's just more ammunition for you as the consumer going in to make your new purchase that when you know that there's tons of vehicles on the lot and the dealers aren't selling and the showrooms aren't that busy, it's pretty easy to walk in there and start negotiating and get that price. Now, remember, this might be your time to start negotiating, but I truly believe, as I've said in other videos, springtime is probably one of the worst times to be buying a car. You always want to look post-holiday season, of course, Memorial Day. Of course, we also talk about post-tax season where people have used a tax purchase or they've, they've purchased a vehicle to put against their taxes in their business or they've also had a tax windfall on, you know, they've had money back as a tax return and so they're out there buying now. But let that dust settle, get past tax season and now you're going to find the dealers are just basically stuck with a whole boatload of new pickup trucks and that's going to leave them all in a world of hurt. The truck market is literally on the verge of failing and the consumers like you and I could be huge winners in this catastrophe. And with all of that said, be sure to check this out. Yes, in fact, since we're talking trucks, this can actually literally put Ram out of business. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.